Hey V, you all right? <sighs> Let's do this. <sighs> You won't give out what this is. Okay. What now? Barry. Johnny. You barry? On a plonge. Where are we? Our BBS. Data Fortress. Bridge to the Deep Net. Beyond there are no borders. Beyond the Black Wall. Welcome to the Cyberpunk 2077 2019 Deep Dive video. In last year's gameplay reveal, we showed you our vision for the world of Cyberpunk 2077, its quests, and visual design. This year, we'd like to give you a peek at some of the play styles you'll be able to adopt as your character progresses through the story. Here goes nothing. You're about to see sequences embodying two distinct approaches to playing Cyberpunk. <laughs> We'll show you a strong solo build, that is, a character who focuses on employing blunt force and taking instant action. And a Netrunner build, a playstyle taking frequent advantage of stealth tactics, hacking, and battlefield control achieved using malicious software. Additionally, you'll learn more about Pacifica, one of the game's districts. Two gangs, the Animals and the Voodoo Boys. And you'll see glimpses of Johnny Silverhand, the digital construct who haunts our main character, V. A word of caution. Given that the video covers a section of the game deep into the main storyline, we have edited the footage to contain as few spoilers as possible. Be aware that the gameplay as presented does reveal characters and locations you'll see while playing the game's main story arc. So watch at your own discretion. Where are we headed? As Polaris's campaign promised, we quote... This way. In this video, you'll experience a segment of a quest from the middle of the game. We're currently in Pacifica, one of Night City's six unique districts. No Pacifica with? Nah. You guys aren't exactly great at rolling out the welcome mat for outsiders. It was designed to be a tourist hotspot within the city. As you can see, this didn't pan out. When uncertainty struck the global economy, investors pulled their funding, leaving most establishments unfinished. It's one of those places where expectations and reality collided, resulting in a heap of disappointment. Ongoing gang wars plague this part of the city. Outsiders don't come here if they don't have to. Even by Night City standards, it's dangerous to those unfamiliar with it. Taking a casual stroll here would not be a good idea. A fast motorbike or armor-plated car would be the safer option. But places like this have their advantages. If you're in need of rare goods or illegal cyberware, Pacifica's bustling local markets are a good place to start your search. The Grand Imperial Mall is a whole other story. It was one of the last developments in Pacifica to lose its funding. Until recently it stood vacant, but now a gang called the Animals has moved in for reasons unknown. Something's not going right for the big guy on top. And that's what we need to learn in order to earn the trust of the Voodoo Boys, the Animals' rivals. What the hell? Could fucking tell me what you plan to do first. You take job. 
you do what I say. So you jack in now. Of the many gangs in Cyberpunk 2077, the Voodoo Boys are the most skilled at using the net. I have now seen the Grizzle Hardwood on Subnet. Why? What for? You are my vessel now. I see what you see, hear what you hear. This mysterious gang of highly skilled netrunners has close ties to the local Haitian community. You are the? We have been waiting. Haitians settled in Pacifica in the 2060s after natural disasters struck their island and forced them to emigrate en masse. The Voodoo Boys gang formed around this same time, though at a smaller scale. Now the gang effectively rules Pacifica. <laughs> The Voodoo Boys don't usually work with outsiders. Lucky for us, it seems they're prepared to make an exception this time. Mr. Han sent me. He said you got Murph work needs doing. Still, to earn their trust, we need to prove our worth. Placide, one of the Voodoo Boys higher-ups, has offered us a mission. We need to infiltrate the Grand Imperial Mall, currently occupied by the Voodoo Boys' deadly enemy, a gang called the Animals. 2035. Zero seven. Three seconds before, poof, the camionette. We try to learn where the camionette come from. The animals are not your normal gang. Their presence in Pacifica is suspicious. They value might above all else and wear melee combat implants to raise their prowess in combat. Their beverage of choice is juice, a potent strength and speed enhancing concoction. As sought after bouncers, they're usually dispersed throughout town. As skilled street level business types, they've cornered the market in illegal substances and underground live or die prize fights. When they converge in one spot, it's for something big. It's then they appoint the fastest and strongest among them as their ad hoc leader. In this case, it's a woman named Sasquatch. Said you wanted my bags inside. No. As far as I remember, you said no bone brain buffaloes on steroids. I'm afraid that's the cost of doing biz. This is the tech Placide was talking about. It seems non-standard for the animals. And this is where we come in. Getting to the van won't be easy, but we're more than qualified for the job, which we can complete in one of many ways. The character creation in Cyberpunk 2077 is the kind you'd expect from a full-fledged RPG. You start by choosing your past, important because this unlocks special options at important story junctures. You also fully customize your character using a deep customization system that spans not only your look and style, but also your abilities. Cyberpunk 2077 does not feature fixed classes. Instead, it has a fluid class system that allows players to mix and match a wide range of abilities to suit their play styles. You can create a strong solo character, a skilled netrunner, or any other hybrid class you can imagine. Let's see how a solo play style in Cyberpunk 2077 might work. Solos prefer a direct approach. They use guns and might to get things done. So let's wreak some havoc. With our enhanced strength, we can strip this turret of its weapon to give the animals a taste of their own medicine. This is how a player investing in solo abilities might live out their Terminator power fantasy. Enhanced strength lets us force open doors or grab enemies to use as human shields. We also gain access to powerful melee combat cyberware. So even someone as fast and strong as Sasquatch, the leader of this group of animals, is not impossible to beat for a solo. Sasquatch has a different game plan. She's out to jack in and hack us. Let's see how this plays out. Ready for some fun? Oh, Proceed. What's going on? It's our choice if we want to finish her off or spare her. Your cyberpunk, your rules. If you'd rather sneak around, hide, and strike from the shadows, no problem. 
Just develop your net running skills to get around obstacles or hack into enemy tech to have it do the dirty work for you. Net running abilities mean hacking skills that let us use our cyber deck to breach access points. For this, we fill the buffer of our cyber deck with a string of instructions represented by these letters and numbers. Matching the instructions for basic access grants us control of devices connected to this network. The more instructions we match, the more control we gain over elements in the network. We can hack our way through in numerous ways. A quick hack may grant us control of the security camera. Another one should let us tweak the difficulty of the training bot to create a distraction. With our nanowire, we can even hack this guy's implants from a distance. In this world, almost everything is connected to a local network. And that means it can be hacked. Ours is a wolf. Which brings us back to cyberspace. You don't get to do anything in the net unnoticed. There's always someone watching. It could be Corpos, or even worse, it could be Netwatch. And that is exactly the case here. Who is they? Netwatch. They always have to fuck us. Netwatch and the Voodoo Boys are like fire and ice. The first of these wants to maintain the old order and protect people from AI anarchy originating from beyond the Black Wall. The Voodoo Boys want to establish contact with the free AIs. They believe this will enable their boundless expansion on the net and grant them the upper hand over Netwatch. Netwatch sees this as the end of the world. Both are right. Whoa, hey. Easy. How you deal with the Netwatch agent is entirely up to you. Do we side with the gang? Choosing to be on Netwatch's bad side is never wise. But can we really trust the Voodoo Boys? You set me up! As you can see, we have many possible options. But in each case, we take a risk. I think I'll just stick to my plan. In the world of cyberpunk, few things go as planned. And that was just a glimpse of how complex the branching storyline in Cyberpunk 2077 can get. Every decision you make will have consequences. Your choices will shape how the world reacts to you and affect your relationships with those around you. One of those relationships is special. Ever heard of Johnny Silverhand? A rebel rocker boy who will be your companion throughout your adventure in Night City? Come on, really think they give a rat's dick how you look? Like everyone in Cyberpunk 2077, he has his own agenda. You'll decide if he'll be your ally or your enemy. And that chip in your head, the one thanks to which Johnny lives inside your mind. Well, that's a story for another time.